hello everyone. So, in the previous uh, portion what we had seen was that we had compared two different lotteries ok if you and, and we applied a particular logic which was to compare the cost of participation in the lottery with the uh, average outcome of the lottery. And what we saw was we get a kind of unintuitive answer that if by applying the same logic on two lotteries that are that are sort of the, and the two lotteries are scaled versions of each other we somehow get to this conclusion that we should be participating in both. However, intuitively it does not seem right this there is one lottery that seems more somehow riskier than the other and uh, and therefore, our logic is somehow seems to not ca capture all the elements that involved that are involved in coming to a decision about participation in this lottery. So, just to recap what it was if you if you see here uh, we we had uh, we the two lotteries the first lottery involved involved uh, a choice uh, involved participation we, we wanted to participate in the lottery by we had to participate in the lottery by paying 100 rupees is also the worth of a cake it uh, a cake costs us 100 rupees the outcome in the outcome of the lottery you get 3 cakes with probability 2 thirds and 0 cakes with probability 1 third. So, the average outcome the average outcome of the lottery was that you get 2 cakes on average. So, and now 2 cakes is worth more than 100 rupees because a cake is worth 100 rupees. So, we said that it makes sense to participate in a lottery like this. But then I gave you another another lottery in which one had to pay not 1 100 rupees, but 1 crore to enter this lottery. Now, 1 crore buys you a house of a certain area and the outcome of the lottery was that well with 2 thirds probability you would get a house with thrice the area or and with 1 third probability you would get you would get nothing at all. In other words you would lose even the 1 crore that you paid for paid in participation of to participate in the lottery. Now, uh, one, but once again the average outcome here was this was once again a house that is at least that is twice the that has twice the area. So, it is 3 times 3 x the area here and uh, with probability 2 thirds and 1 th and 0 with probability 1 third. So, the average outcome was a house with so the uh, the average outcome was a house with twice the area and that was worth more than 1 crore. And so, uh, once again it is made it said the uh, the logic told us that one should actually be participating in this lottery ok that one should actually be paying 1 crore to to take a bet in which to you get with you get a thrice the size of a house with two thirds probability and with one third probability you will lose even the 1 crore that you paid for it ok. So, this somehow seemed wrong because it seemed like we are not factoring in the, in the fact that 1 crore means a lot more than uh, the loss of 1 crore means a lot more than the loss of 100 rupees. Uh, and therefore, there is an element of risk in the second lottery which is larger far far larger than it is in the, in the first lottery. In the first lottery you would lose in the worst case just 100 rupees in the second lottery in the worst case you would lose 1 crore rupees ok. So, there is a vast difference between the two and that has somehow not been factored in into the uh, into the analysis. So, looking so the point here is therefore, that looking at just the average outcomes the or looking at the point here is that looking at just the the average outcomes ok. The average outcomes do not adequately capture our attitude towards decision making under uncertainty. Decision making under uncertainty involves a lot more nuanced thinking than just simply comparing averages and th what this has this example has shown is is basically that averages is are not enough ok. So, the lesson so this taking this lesson forward now what we want to do is come up with a 
we want to ask okay then what should one consider? Should one consider the average, should one consider the second moment, should one consider the third moment etc. etc. So, this is what uh, the uh, this is basically the question that we that we end up with. Now, in order to so basically what we need in order to answer this sort of a question is a proper unified uh, logical framework for comparing two different lotteries. Okay. In other and in when I say lotteries essentially what we need is a way of comparing two different probability distributions which is somehow better than the other. Okay. So, what should be the framework for, uh, for comparing the two is what we would be uh, we, uh, we would now be exploring. Okay. So, in order to do this let us set up set up therefore a formal model. Okay. So, formal model for decision making under uncertainty. So, the model for decision making under uncertainty consists of the following. So, you have first a set D, okay, which is a set of decision alternatives. So we want to we want to choose one out of this this set of alternatives. Okay, this is our uh, this is the set of alternatives that we have. The second element, second thing is omega. Omega is called the set of states of the world or the states of nature. Now, omega is a set uh, of possible choices that nature is going to choose for us. We do not have any choice, uh, we do not have any control over what, what omega uh, will arise. Okay. So, the omega is the space of a variable which is exogenous to the problem, it is chosen by nature. Okay. So, it is what, so omega is what captures the uncertainty in this problem. Now, every time we we take a decision in a state of the world and the true state of the world is omega. Okay. So, the decision is D here D in capital D and the state of the world is omega in capital omega. What we get is an outcome, an outcome which is f of D comma omega. This is our outcome with decision D and state omega right. And what we have also is a preference relation on the outcomes ok. So, we have this. Now, what is this? This is basically a, a relation which compares two outcomes ok. So, this is a preference. So, it tells you preference relation between two on the set of outcomes let us say the set of outcomes is and here I will denote the set of outcomes is denoted capital O ok. So, this less than equal to sign is a preference relation on the set of outcomes. Now, what does this mean? It basically tells you if I give you two different uh, two different outcomes, what is the which uh, what which is more preferred than the other. So, if uh, so, it when I say when I write outcome uh, outcome O1 is le is less than equal to outcome O2, it means that O2 is preferred to O1 that is all it means ok. So, one way in which this man this can manifest for example, uh, is that there is actually a function, a function that maps the set of outcomes to say uh, to real numbers and we have this and we have this we have a way of measuring the quality or the attractiveness of an outcome. So, for example, if uh, g of O 1 is less than equal to 
g of O2 then that is that we can say is equivalent to O1 being least less preferred compared to less preferred compared to O2 ok. So, what one wants to do is find a decision uh, that uh, that helps us sort of deal with this uh, with the uncertainty involved ok. So, now because the the preference so you want to try and get the outcome in some sense of highest preference, but then the preference the, uh, the outcome that will get realized is not just a function of what you choose, but also a function of what the, what nature chooses because outcome comes about as a result of because the outcome comes about as a result of this function. This function is the one that it is a function of both the decision D as well as the state state of nature which is uh, which is uh, which is chosen by which is chosen exogenously right. So, uh, so we would want to so therefore, we need to have sort of some kind of a framework to say what is the way for which by which we are going to we are going to say a decision D is a good decision right. So, this gives rise to many so obviously there is no unique uh, uh, way of of disambiguating this. So, the one so there are obviously several approaches some approaches for example, are, are as follows so here are some approaches. So, one is to look at the average outcome right. So, one one way is to look at the average outcome. So, in this case what one has is actually not, not just an uncertainty, but also a, distribu a probability distribution over the set of uh, over, over the set of uh, set of possible omegas that can arise. So, what one looks at then is is you you look at well the you look at g evaluated not at any one particular outcome, but actually at the average outcome you look at g of therefore, the expected outcome that will arise when you take a decision D. So, the expectation here is with respect to omega where omega is the is the is now a random variable it is its value is chosen by nature right and its distribution is also decided by nature. So, you are taking an expectation with respect to omega and uh, of the outcome that would arise when you take a decision D right. So, what we are doing here is we are we are proposing that suppose I took a decision D, think of all the possible outcomes that can arise, look at the average of them, look at the value that that average outcome gives us under G and that is what uh, that is what we consider is the value of our decision D right. So, what we then need then say is well uh, this is now a function of D. So, what we can do is well choose the best D amongst all uh, best D amongst all the possible decisions. In other words what one does is then you try to maximize this function over by choosing the the best D in the set of possible decisions D ok. So, this was basically the attitude that we used to uh, to uh, to compare the two in, in both of the lotteries that that I that we just discussed essentially we looked at the average outcome. Another attitude is to look at the worst case. In this case, one does not need to know the any particular distribution, there is there is no probability distribution on the uncertainty. We one just looks at the worst possible thing that could happen and then tries to take the decision that will give us the best outcome in the worst case, right. So, you look at you you look at you so assuming you have taken a decision D and the state and nature chooses an uh, a state of the world omega we think of all the worst possible state of the world that nature could choose for us. So, you look at worst in the sense of the value in terms of the value of the outcome g uh, outcome that could arise. So, you look at the minimum of this overall omega and then we say let us let us see this is now the worst case reward or value that we can get out of a decision d. So, considering that we have taken a decision D whatever nature could do cannot cannot be worse than this. And then we say well let me try to do now choose the decision that would maximize uh, this this worst case this worst case value right. So, you want to 
you choose a d that would maximize this. This would imply this, this sort of attitude basically does not require us to know with what probability various outcome, various states of nature are going to occur, one just simply looks at the worst possible thing that could happen and takes a decision based on that. So, obviously this kind of a, this kind of an uh, this kind of an attitude could lead to many misses in the sense that you would miss out on opportunities that would have otherwise that, that you that you have ignored just because you are worried about a certain worst case right. So, ob, so, uh, so clearly one can easily imagine scenarios where this kind of an attitude does not actually does not actually work very well. The other, uh, the other extreme of this is to look at the best case, is this is to be perpetually optimistic, uh, you know permanently optimistic about, about what, what will play out in, in the uncertainty. So, you look at, you think of the, worst, the best possible thing that could happen when you take a decision D and nature chooses an omega. And based on this you say well now let me choose the decision D that gives me the best possible thing in the best possible case. So, you try to maximize this now over D in D right. So, these are these are some possible some approaches that one can adopt towards uh, towards decision making under uncertainty. Now, it turns out that actually none of these none of these are actually complete in the sense that the, the kind of fallacy that we saw in the earlier uh, in the earlier example will also arise with any of these approaches okay so that there is a certain uh, so what there is a certain better approach uh, that, uh, that exists and that's what i will talk to you about so the approach that i am going to talk to you about comes from a field what that is known as expected utility theory so this field is is called the expected utility theory and this theory by in the course of its development automatically gives us a notion of risk ok. We will see soon you will see as, as I go about developing it that risk comes out as a uh, uh, the, the our, uh, risk and our attitudes towards various types of uh, various types of lotteries that we had just discussed all of that actually comes out as a nice corollary out of the, out of this approach. Now, what we will posit in this approach is that there is in fact a probability distribution on the states of nature ok. So, states of nature occur with a certain probability. So, there is a, a probability distribution on the set of states of nature or states of the world ok which is omega. Now, each this now is look look what happens here. So, each decision that we take each decision can lead can lead to multiple outcomes. can lead to multiple outcomes based on the state of the world that gets realized based on omega right. So, you take a decision D based on the value of this is the decision that you took here is your decision based on the value of omega that means based on what nature does right state of the world. based on what the state of the world is you could get various uh, you could get various types of outcomes as a result of your as a result of the decision D that you have taken right. Now, you could also have the same outcome arising from various states of the world. So, that many different states of the world could could sort of come uh, conspire in such a way that you could still regard that they still for the same decision D give you the same possible outcome right. So, what you can do is you can say well since you are only concerned about outcomes we can talk of what is the probability with which you are going to get a particular outcome right. 
what is the probability with which you are going to get a particular outcome when you take a particular when you take a decision D. This then gives you a probability distribution on the pos on all the possible outcomes that can arise. So, it gives you a, a probability distribution on the set of outcomes. So, this probability distribution is a function of the decision that you have chosen right this because this the probability will change with the decision. Certain decisions will give you certain outcomes with higher probability and certain uh, decisions will give you certain other outcomes with lower probability. So, the probability distribution itself will depend on the this distribution is what we denote as P D. P D P D of a certain outcome outcome O is simply the probability. So, let this so let this probability distribution on the set of states of nature let this be denoted by P ok. Let this be denoted by let this be denoted by P. So, P D of an outcome is the probability of this set it is all the it is the set of all omegas such that under decision D the omega somehow gives you the outcome that you are interested in this outcome O. given that you have taken a decision D right. So, this pro, this 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 now is a P D is now a probability distribution on the set of outcomes. And so, if we have a framework for comparing the probability distributions on the set of outcomes, we have a framework therefore, for comparing decisions. Because the we can then choose the probability distribution, uh, we, we can then choose the decision that gives us the best possible probability distribution on the outcomes. Right? So, this, this kind of an a lifting where we take where we where we go from decisions to outcomes and then from outcomes to probabilities on outcomes. This kind of a lifting is something you will see in other other uh, portions of the course as well because this is this is a this is a way of thinking about about uh, problems under uncertainty that is extremely powerful. It works not just in these sort of problems, but also in certain decentralized problems you will see mo much more of this later in the course. So, the benefit of this will become clearer you know more uh, in hindsight for the moment just just bear with me that this what this has done is essentially uh, it essentially it has given us a way uh, it has given us a framework for comparing comparing decisions provided we have a framework for comparing probability distributions on outcomes ok. So, if we can compare if we can compare probability distributions on outcomes we can compare decisions. we can compare distribution and what is what is really a probability distribution and on an out on on the set of outcomes well it's nothing but a, what we have been so far calling a lottery okay so probability distribution on outcomes and a simple word a name for this is actually nothing but this is actually what we have been so far calling a lottery right lottery uh, in, in the lotteries that we had so far we had uh, the, there were two possible outcomes the outcome you know with that, that you get uh, thrice the three cakes or you get no cake at all. So, those were the two possible outcomes and the probability distribution was uh, uh, was uh, two third and one third right ok. So, now so the fundamental premise of, of utility theory or expected utility theory is that one already one has a way of comparing probabilities or comparing probability distributions on outcomes. And what is this way of comparing probability distributions on outcomes? So, I will I will explain I will explain that to you. Expected utility theory, the premise of expected utility theory
expected utility theory. presumes or uh, or imposes that there exists a function a function u okay now what is this function u or it's a, it, this function is a function from the set of outcomes to the to the real numbers so it's a function u okay and this this has this it has it has the following property that you would prefer okay you prefer decision 1 to decision 2 if and only if you prefer probability distribution induced by or the lottery induced by decision 1 to the lottery induced by decision 2 which is equivalent which is if and only if you, you this is the most important thing you look at the expected utility the expected utility of the outcome under decision d1 ok look at the expected utility of the outcome under decision d1 that is less than equal to the expected utility of the outcome under decision 2. So, if, so the term here this here is this term is the expected utility under decision d1. So, if I took the decision d1 nature will choose its omega I would get an outcome f of d1 comma omega ok I get an outcome f of d1 comma omega the this is the outcome that I would get the utility that I derive from that outcome is u of f of d1 comma omega. So, the term here on the left is the expected utility. So, the expected utility from this particular outcome uh, from, uh, from, uh, so from this particular decision right. So, on the term similarly the term on the right is the expected utility under decision 2. So, what the uh, what expected utility theory presumes is that you would you prefer decision d1 d2 to d1 provided the expected utility of of decision d2 is larger than the expected utility of 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 decision d1 ok. So, this this what this has done is basically taken their set of decisions which were ordered in some in some sort of uh, uh, in some kind of a, a non specific way because of because all you had is some way of uh, some kind of preference ordering between them saying that you prefer this to that and so on and con and converted converted that preference ordering to a a comparison of real numbers you just compare the expected utility from each decision of decisions with each other those are just real numbers they are to be compared with each other and you choose the decision that maximizes the expected utility this this reduction is extremely powerful now one thing you will you would have immediately noticed that I said that I have used the word that expected utility theory presumes that there exists such a function. It is just presuming that there is such a function there is such a function u right. It is only saying that it is not actually showing that there or, or proving that there exists such a function u. But, but does it the answer what you will be what you will soon see is in fact it does prove such that there exists such a function. So, what it will tell you is that if certain axioms are true about the space of about this particular preference relation, this preference relation which dis defines a preference between between various between across different lotteries. So, if you had if, if a certain uh, set of axioms about the preference relation hold then there always exists such a function u right. So, 
So, although I have said here that the expected utility theory presumes that there exists such a function, this is this is not the full story. Actually expected utility theory will we will soon see that under a set of certain set of axioms about the preference relation between uh, that compare any two lotteries on the set of lotteries on the outcomes, there is actually there always exists such a utility function. And it is the shape and the form of this utility function that will tell you the uh, that that encodes in it the attitude towards risk. Okay. So, all of this in the next portion.